A popular narrative in our culture today is that there's a conflict between science and the Christian faith. Dominic, what would you say to somebody who says science and Christianity are in conflict with each other? Well, first let's make sure we're talking the same language. Science is defined as the study of nature, and typically uh, you have a process of observation, hypothesis, forming, and testing. Christianity, on the other hand, is a worldview, and um, science is limited in terms of it can only study nature, it can only study that which is testable in a scientific manner, and so it's limited and it can't provide all the information that is necessary to form a worldview. So you may see some things in science that uh, would tend to support a Christian worldview. You may see other things that would tend to negate that. You have to weigh the evidence and, and see what decision you come to. But in general, I don't think we're going to find anything in science that could disprove the Christian worldview. It's just limited in that regard. Okay, I want to unpack this a little bit more, but first I want to make sure our viewers know who you are. Uh, you have a, um, a BS and an MS degree in uh, aeronautical and astronautical engineering from Purdue University, a PhD in mechanical engineering from UCLA. You've been a professor at Oral Roberts University since 1992, I believe, uh, teaching engineering and physics courses. You were at one point the dean for the College of Science and Engineering, and you're currently the a director of the Center for the Integration of Faith and Learning at Oral Roberts University. You also have been a Christian for many, many years and have a very powerful Christian witness. So you're a, an ideal person, again, to explore this issue with us about, again, this perception of, of a conflict between science and the Christian faith. How is it possible to be a person who is, again, a, a man or a woman of science or a man or a woman of engineering and also somebody who espouses the Christian faith. How can you do that with integrity? Well, I think it fits well together. All of us are gifted in different ways, and those that are gifted in the area of mathematics and science or engineering, problem solving, analytical thinking, I think are able to use their gifts, be good stewards of those gifts in the fields of science or engineering. And it's really a joy, it's an act of worship to to, in a way, as Kepler said, think God's thoughts after him. Uh, it's amazing to discover something or devise some solution to a problem, and you think, wow, that's, that's a little bit of the expertise and creativity that, that I was given by my creator because I've been made in his image. Excellent, excellent. So, uh, have you ever had doubts um, about your faith? Has there ever been anything that's been discovered in science that has given you pause for thought? Yes, I've been reading recently in the philosophical literature and the scientific literature even, there's some discussion about uh, how biological systems sometimes malfunction and cause birth defects and diseases that produce significant amounts of suffering in people's lives. And uh, something as beautiful as, as the gift of life can, can be uh, distorted and, and uh, produce pain and suffering in people's lives just because of the way it seems that biological systems can malfunction. And so I, I've been looking at that with the, some of the students in my research group at ORU and kind of wondering what, how can a Christian respond to some of these issues? And, you, you can't completely answer that question. It's, it's a mystery, but there's a couple of things you can say. Um, one, it seems as though God has created a universe that is free in a very significant sense. We have free will as, as human creatures, and the universe has a certain amount of freedom to it to uh, develop into a very complex and unique place uh, where we have the freedom to choose the good, the true, and the beautiful, or the opposite. So there's a freedom in the universe, but there's also uh, this freedom in the universe may, may result in some things that would happen that aren't, according to our view, the best things in the world, natural disasters and things like that. But there's a second thing that you think about is, is the impact of sin and choices that human beings have made over the 
the, the history of humanity that may result in suffering and pain. We know from epigenetics that human behavior and animal behavior can impact their state of health, even the state of health of their descendants. So this is a fascinating area that we're just learning more and more about. But I think it gives us a clue as to uh, why uh, these kinds of things, uh, the negatives of the human condition uh, exist in the world.